Hello guys and welcome to part 6 of the Path to the Pro site. This is Heroset here and today I am going to be covering very little to be honest. Uh, what we have done so far is I've gone through all of the videos and all of the keybinds that we can add. Um, we have covered quite a lot in targeting, in mouse position, in focusing. And you know we're at a point in the game now at level 40 where we need to start just thinking about class specific abilities and stats and and things like that now the problem with this is it doesn't really suit with this this series specifically um because i can go in and i could go over and i can tell you all about these stats and how they affect my class like for example i need a lot of strength i also need a lot of endurance and these will be my two primary start stats and in pvp i'm going to need a lot of crit but you know i couldn't tell you that for say an inquisitor or a sniper for example because I've not played the classes myself, so I'll have to learn them as I'm progressing to be able to give you. And as these videos are more or less a, a bringing you from start into the game, giving you more keybinds, giving you more abilities and more use of your controls and, and, and macro ability, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really sit well. And there will be a couple of things I will, however, cover in the last video. Uh, I did mention nameplates. Now, as you can see, you can see the targets HP here. Uh, pretty much to set that up is all you have to do is go into your preferences and under I think it is not controls nameplates, oh, it's under nameplates and what you have here is you have a couple of nameplate options that allow you so you can always show the resolve bar now the resolve bar will be very useful in PvP to tell me for example an inquisitor or a counselor's amount of mana they have left you know if they're out of mana and it's an empty result bar that means I'm just gonna win the fight guaranteed so it's nice to know these things and how strong my opponent is against me uh, obviously I have so health bar here as well and um, scale nameplates that's not really necessary nameplates on enemy players so these three are generally uh, very very useful I think they always show health bar as is it's always necessary and nameplates on enemy NPCs now you can do that on NPCs but as for that that's that's the pretty straightforward uh, next thing I suppose I will cover is that I did move in a little bit more abilities that I have bound and what I am doing with them is throwing them into the alt key now I've been against the alt key because I want to try keep things optimized but you know there's that many abilities in the game more so than I, I actually anticipated that I have found myself going into the alt key now if we just go into the key binds quick slot scroll down here I have my left quick and you know it's just alt Q I'm only adding a couple I'm not I'm not keeping it because I don't like using the alt key if you if you do actually mouse or hold your hand over a for example and then try press press alt and Q how, how the hell are you meant to do that with your baby finger and yeah it doesn't work it's not nice it's not comfortable it doesn't work for me um so yeah, what else can I cover? I mean, in general guys, if you've gotten to the point where you have everything down and all the binds and you've sorted out and you're trying to optimize now at this point, it's just a case of learning abilities now for your class. Um, there will, I, I could go over just quickly say a couple of the stats that were probably very confusing for a lot of people and I know I get some questions on it. Um, there is one called Alacrity and I think it is in force here. Activation speed. Now, Alacrity, this is one of those stats that you'll come across on gear and you still don't know what to do. It's pretty much, in WoW terms, it's haste. Now, how useful it is for your class is something that will really come down to practice. Now, I have done a little bit of research and I know that it does affect the global cooldown and the percentage. So, you know, the global cooldown in general, if I click this, you have this global cooldown popping down here you now. And the speed of that is 1.5 seconds now alacrity has a chance to increase the speed of that so in general across the board in all classes this is a useful stat if it actually benefits you that way because for example I'm I'm a marauder now and all my abilities are based on rage and I'm usually maxed out on rage so I have my global cooldown holding me back from hitting abilities if I had a strong amount of alacrity I'd be able to hit those abilities much much faster now whether or not that's going to benefit me in PvP over, say, another stat, for example, more strength, which could make my hits harder versus hitting faster. You know, it, it's, it's a balance that you just have to practice, and it comes down to a lot of research for your own specific class. 
So I'm not going to go any more into that just to let you know what it does and, and how useful you find it will come in time. The next thing is surge rating. Uh, now surge rating will be something I know myself will be jumping into quite heavily because it's a crit multiplier. Now as you can see there surge rating I have at the moment bonus 4.8 percent it's not very much but as i delve into pvp i want my critical chance now the, the crit multiplier pretty much means that when you crit you hit for a certain amount over your actual basic hit so say i hit for 200 if i crit for the 54 percent or whatever it's going to hit for 310 for example um, if I have like a hundred percent crit it's going to hit for 400 and it's just a multiplier so I really want to kind of get that surge rating up to have the highest crit multiplier so when I do crit it really hurts my opponent and this is very very much more delving into PvP than PvE I'm sure like uh, you can balance it out that dots for example unless they are affected by crit will not be that much use to you and I know a lot of people use prefer to use uh, damage over time effects in PvE because it's that much more pro uh, potent would be the word but yeah that's that's it for now um, if there is anything else I can cover guys let me know if there's something you have a question with or you can you can think of a specific area that's affecting you I mean like I said if I went through I could cover a lot more on my own class but it wouldn't be really part of the the path to the pro side which is meant to be a generic overall feel for everyone so they can get used to um, I will just say uh, I did go in and I have got you know this massacre ability now I think I went over this in video three was it three or four but you know I got this ability and it was called massacre and you know, I said back then that I will probably get an ability that will end up replacing an ability on my bar, and this is actually the true case. What I have is I have this ability massacre that I got from my talents. Now it's replaced this one over here, which is called Vicious Slash. Now Vicious Slash, as you can see, it uses three rage for me and range four meters. So it slashes the target for 646 to 755 weapon damage. This one is the exact same. It uses the exact same amount of rage. So it's a question now whether I want to spend my global cooldown on this rage ability or that one. Except this one hits for a little bit less damage but triggers another ability of mine which is this uh, is part of my Ataro form which hits them for an, an additional, what, what's it say, 166 energy damage. So, you know, I hit for three times every time I use this. Um, which instead of just two times when I use this so the damage is just it's that much better because it's a talent and it's an endpoint talent and you know it's replaced the ability and and therefore I have um, I have no reason really to use this at the moment I uh, have to do some min maxing I guess see if there's actually really any benefit to that or if this is just a plain replacement but for now I'm using it as a replacement it does a pretty nice little um, just a nice little animation there which I will just quickly show so look, we have a little and as you can see, I hit for about three or four times there. And you no, know, when I'm putting up dots and things like that, it's really, really useful. So it looks like a fancy animation, and it took me a little bit to get used to because of timing. But it actually doesn't affect whether or not I use another ability. Um, rotations and things. I said I wanted to cover a bit when I hit level 40, but. I can only do it for my own class and this is where I'm hitting the problem once again. Uh, I can say I will I'll just go over a quick rotation that I do use when I open up especially when I'm going into a flash paint. So obviously I open up with my force charge and then immediately I move into battering slide and this will generally give me a full rage bar to work with. My first uh, main ability to activate then is rupture. This will put a dot on the target. Then I use gore. This will reduce its armor by 100% it's an armor trend uh, penetration ability and then I will go into my heavy ravage this this will be three so what I have now on the target is I have dots up on the target I've reduced its armor by 100% and now I'm hitting the hard with my most powerful uh, and longest cooldown ability for for attacking and then from there I'll start rotating in between assault and massacre and force scream on global cooldown um, obviously retaliation and deadly throw I won't use very much in PvE itself because this requires me one to be hit so if I'm in a flashpoint and I have a tank working for me 
I'm not going to be hit so this is rarely going to pop up and deadly throw in general is a it's a more of a CC ability for me uh, because if I look at it here and I have some some talents in deadly throw and I think it's where is it battering assault Aha! Displacement. Okay, so here it is. It deadly throw has a 100% chance to immobilize the target for 3 seconds. Pretty much, as I'm talented into this, that's the only primary use this ability has for me. It's, it's really low damage and it's not worth a global cooldown. I'd rather spend it on Massacre. Uh, unless the guy is obviously at range and I'm trying to catch up to him. So, you know, between those, those two abilities that I've gone over, the rest... Uh, oh, crap abilities. You know, I have my camouflage. I have this new one, Undying Rage, which will bring me... Give me pretty much damage reduction for f five seconds, uh, and it uses 50% of my health. So I'd probably have to use it when I'm about this much in my health bar, which is not very good. But yeah, that's it. That's that's all I'm going to cover, guys. This is probably this, as I said, will be the last episode for, of the Path to this Pro side. Um, if you want, send me a message. Uh, I might do a bonus series if there are some requests that I get that require some more clarification on things that you're not sure of. Um, I will just say last again, I did actually finally manage to bring my own um, camera rotation speed back up to 15%, so whether or not I push on that, but you know, it's quite comfortable, quite fast, quite nice at the moment, so we'll see, you know, they might change some of the effects, I don't actually know if it's still doing it with patches and things like that, but we'll keep an eye on that. But that's it for me guys, thank you for watching, I hope this series really really helped you out. Uh, of course, leave me a comment, let me know if there's anything else I can cover. And of course, I will not be ending obviously my videos from this point, I will be continuing to put out different videos of different things, but if I start covering more in my own class for example, or different games, I might hit Bad of uh, Modern Warfare 3 or something like that, just to you know, see how, how much of a difference my mouse effect has, has, has grown and how well I can precision kill people, you know, as it goes. But yeah, that's everything. Thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.